Okay, we got a couple minutes left to kill before Dan's ready, so at Robin's request, we will check out this Path of Exile video. For anyone who can't justify $70 for an ARPG, or can't afford it. This is Path of Exile, free to play. There we go. Hey there, have you ever wondered what it would be like to run around slaying thousands of Oh, do I have my speed up or is he fast? Oh, he fast. Okay. All right, it's fine. Prepare myself. Find center. Eyes. Prepare. We're going to be doing some reading here. It's going to be fast. You got to be ready. The finish line is in sight. Ears, you're fucked, but eyes will try and cover you on this one. Thankfully, there's big subtitles. Uh... All right, brain, you're gonna have to wake the hell up. We're 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 in uh we're in overdrive. Let's do it. Monsters without wearing pants? Well, boy, have I got the game for you. I never wear pants this when I'm slaying monsters. This is Path of Exile. This too is Path of Exile. Yep, you guessed it. Path this of Exile. Also Path of Exile. This is my cat Jinx. Isn't she cute? This game also is Path of Exile. Insane. In depth character building? Check. Hundreds of skills to choose from? Check. Thousands of unique items? Check. Engage Hundreds of skills, but 15 viable ones. <laughs> end game content? Check. An actual trade economy that is probably the closest thing to a real world economy in a game? Check. PhD level crafting? Check. Tedious and annoying inventory management? Check. Shitty trade system gated behind a small paywall? Check. Constant nerfs? Check. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Is this wait, supposed wait, to be wait, fun? Wait. We're off script, oh, yeah. we're off oh, script. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Path of Exile is a huge Mungus game, so let me start from the beginning. The first challenge you'll face is this absolute mess of a screen. Now, you being the proud gamer that you are, will feel compelled to tick all of these boxes, but this is an absolute noob trap that Mr. Chris marks wait, a lot. Wait, 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 wait. Ruthless is the season name, right? Hardcore solo self found and Ruthless, that's the season. No, season is Crucible. What the fuck is Ruthless? That's new. Crucible, what's Ruthless now? That's new. That I have not played since that's been added in. And the new difficulty mode, so it's hard mode. Got it. It's without Ruth. Fair enough, TZ. That's true. Ruthless is 90% less loot, no movement skills, everything is shit, and go fuck yourself. Oh, so that's for that crowd. That's for the hardcore crowd that doesn't feel like it's hardcore enough. The real gamers. Understood. Laid out for you. Do not fall for it. Instead, pick this one here so you can join me and thousands of others in our complete dissatisfaction. I actually like solo self-found. That's how I usually start my POE season. Your class and begin your adventure. You wake up on the beach, press the shiny skip tutorial button because you're a real gamer. Until I get tired of that it. Shit, kill some local corpses, run circles around this guy, and quickly realize what the hell you're getting yourself into. Don't worry though, there are no wrong answers as to how you build your characters. Because no matter what you do, your first... So interestingly enough... This looks a lot scarier than it actually is. Once you realize health nodes are critical, keystones are the main thing you're moving towards, and percentage scaling is king, like, you first route out your path to the keystone, or whatever keystones you're interested in, and then you look, okay, what does my build need? If you're doing the, uh, what was that one? What's the what's Righteous Fire? What's the one where you set yourself on fire? You need increased max fire resist. Well, that's easy. You just search in here, fire resist. It's really not as complex. It looks terrifying. But once you realize it's, it's very simple what you're actually looking for and that there's a nice little search bar here, it's really not that bad. I've done my own builds and shit. Like, and you can just follow a guide which has it all mapped out for you and it doesn't matter. So, you know... It looks spooky, but it's it's not that bad. Don't worry though, there are no wrong answers as to how you build your characters. Because Bell no Righteous what Fire you do, now. Your first I know. Is absolutely going to suck. I've heard about it. I've heard people raging about it. Get a life. <laughs> Sorry, I, I meant get life. 
Yeah, totally meant that. Definitely yeah. not get a life. That would be so rude of me. I mean, come on, we just met. I wouldn't. After talking to locals that are only slightly less crazy than those you're going to be spending hours killing, you can really get started on your quest to kill each and every worship god in Rayclast. Yeah, you're not exactly a good guy here. I'm the bad guy. As you progress through the campaign, you'll gain access to <coughs> all kinds of new okay. skills that come in the form of gems. For the lore nuts out there, you may find it fun to know that initially, these gems will be implanted inside of people's bodies in order to gain access to their superpowers. Wow, so metal. But modern technology has found a way around that. Just place these gems in the sockets in your gear and voila, you can use these skills for yourselves, mm -hmm. cause lore. At this point, you'll probably be thinking something along the lines of, oh my god, there are so many different the builds fuck? I can play. This is awesome. Let me stop you right there though. There are really only two builds in Path of Exile. Righteous Fire and not Righteous Fire. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you willingly put yourself through the pain yeah. of to press buttons while playing results? Yeah, we got we got hundreds of skill gems and support gems and all this shit, but we, you know, we got like six skills that are actually like, if you want to kill Uber Shaper, uh, you, here's the six skills that are going to do that without being a massive dick punch. So have fun deciding which one of these you want to run for the whole season. Oh, but, uh, right, I forgot. Two of them have very strict gear requirements and are therefore not season start friendly. So here's the three that are season start friendly. And then you'll you'll get the gear for the other ones on that one and then roll your second character, which will be the end game build. And in decades of wrist pain, when you could just be this guy and feel no pain at all. Always shit, yeah, true. Honestly though, the build variety in this game is actually completely insane, and anyone who tells you otherwise is probably incapable of ever experiencing joy and is hoping to find their life's purpose oh, in the video. Oh fuck, I can't you can feel melee, joy. You can go spells, you can go bows, you can go minions, you can go totems, you can go traps, you can go mines, you can go crafts and crit, you can go whatever this is. Look, anything you can think of is... You can, but will you? I've seen the build forums. I think the answer to that is probably not. Well, you will for a while until you realize not means you're going to have a hard time when you get to endgame and you're not going to kill things fast enough and then you can't just ignore the Aziri mechanics and she wipes the floor with your ass. Or whatever the hardest shit is now. I don't fucking know. Probably possible. It may not be any good, but there are so many different combinations. It may not be any good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Trees, ascendancies, and items that you can do anything you want, sweetie. And that is a fact. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah, the campaign. During the 10-ish hour long campaign, look, I know your favorite streamer does it in 3, I just don't have time to play 26 hours a day like them, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. During the 12-ish hour long campaign, you'll meet all kinds of crazy people, get lost in the Val runes, We've kill gone from 10 boss, to 12 hours, so no. Lady, kill her, kill him, find her and fight her again, she becomes your friend, kill her for it real It honestly takes time, me a lot longer, him, but I like statue, to complete crab, everything and all get all the side stuff. The other so. Val place, look, if you're in a Val area, you're gonna be lost, that's just how it goes. Then you kill a spider, some more statues, Sexy this time though. This abomination, and finally the final boss of the campaign, Kitava. Again. Congratulations, you have completed the tutorial. Yeah, if you quit at this point, you're pretty much missing out on like 99% of the fun. Welcome to the end game, aka maps. Maps are these items that you'll find while killing monsters that you can place in your map device to open up portals to a new zone where your objective is to go and kill a whole bunch of monsters on your way to the boss. I actually like maps, even low level maps. I've always, because it gives you different environments and, you know, a bit of creature variety and uh while they're pretty much always the same they're open enough that uh, you kind of go through them whatever way you feel is the most optimal way to zip around and find all the elite packs and shit and maybe you kill the boss maybe you don't the fact that they all have a boss at the end that's un relatively unique to the map as well is kind of cool uh, that was Diablo 3's biggest problem, is that rifts were kind of this idea, but slimmed way the hell down. Like, they were super linear, and while it was different areas, the areas didn't always necessarily feel different, and there wasn't really any choice of, well, I'm, I'm starting here, well, I'll just go this way. No, you, you always went that way. It, they, that was the only way to go. And the creature variety didn't always make sense for the map or the 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 areas you're in. Although to be fair, with map modifiers and shit, it's, they don't always in maps in Path of Exile either. But they usually at least try a little bit until you start getting modifiers and stuff. But Poe is maps done well. Diablo three is maps done poorly, basically. 
Kill the boss and then hopefully find another map while you're in there. They come in different tiers which increase in difficulty, culminating in some really epic boss fights completely separate from the campaign. For every map you complete for the first time, you get a point to put in your Atlas Passive Tree, because yes, one Passive Tree was not enough. See, this is so new. I didn't know there was an Atlas this allows Passive you to Tree your now. Experience in whatever way you see fit. Do you like Legion? Focus on these. Like Tower Defense? Get some Blight Notes. Love crafting? Grab the Harvest Notes. Have no idea what I'm talking about? No problem. There's a note for that too. You can do whatever the heck you want, and really, this is what makes Path of Exile's endgame shine. Well, that plus the incredible feeling of power you get when you're playing an absolute Giga Chat build. Although, admittedly, it does take a while to get to that point, especially if you have no idea what you're doing, which, like, I'm assuming is probably most of you. The good news is that the game does a good job of teaching you how all of these systems work, and there's an excellent in-game guide that answers all your questions so you'll never have to look anything up on the... the uh, wait, what? <laughs> Whew, I think I got mixed up with another game. Uh huh. <laughs> My bad. Path of Exile actually tells you nothing, and the in-game guide is complete trash. Yeah. You'll have to look everything up on the correct wiki, and probably follow a build guide if you want to have a smooth first. Notice how he said the correct wiki, because there are incorrect wikis out there that are garbage and basically worthless, or have outdated, or just absolutely incorrect information. Because everyone wanted to capitalize on POE traffic. So you gotta make sure you're going to the right wiki. And even then, it might not be enough. Thankfully, there are dozens of us nerds added in the who put together guides and make third-party tools that help make things a little bit less daunting. Although, at the same time, having to look up guides and tools can be daunting in itself. Just damn wrong so, uh, the question is yeah. fair. On the one hand, it's pretty awesome that there are players willing to put their time to help make the game more enjoyable for others and easier to get into. But on the other hand, that has led to things like this happening. And it's worth noting, we do have an API, so if the public want to take the API and implement it better than us or faster than us, they're welcome to do so. Now, out of context, that doesn't sound so bad, but trust me, if you know, you know. Moving on, let's talk about those bosses I mentioned earlier. Eventually, if you put up with Path of Exile's ridiculous learning curve long enough, you'll reach some absolutely wild bosses. The first two bosses you'll likely encounter are these guys. Okay, I'm going to start um, with, in Diablo 4, probably Druid, because I like to suffer. Bosses, these guys, which also have really interesting fights. Now, you'll probably meet this woman next, and she's actually kind of interesting. Finally, there's these guys, which lead to this guy, and then these guys that lead to this guy, and then these guys that lead to this guy. Yeah, you got your, what is it, four, four major map time, bosses, Elder, and then you know what? And then you work your way up to... Challenging enough. So GGG said, f*** it, Uber, Uber, Elder. Listen, there are plenty of fun bosses to fight in Path of Exile, so if that's Uber's not enough, boss, double your Uber. Just know that it'll take you right. hundreds of hours to get to them, probably. And most of them aren't worth doing unless you specialize your Atlas tree for them and literally spend hours just farming the same boss over and over. Uh -huh. All thanks to the economy. Speaking of the economy, holy shit, dude. I know someone in the comments is going to tell me I'm wrong and point out some obscure game nobody has heard of, but man, this is probably the closest thing to a real-world economy in a video game. Obscure, Look, here's a site that huh? I think everyone knows about it. All Eve. kinds of items in real time with graphs and links and percentage increases and, and all probably that hates it money for related. some reason or another. I'm no economist. I literally know nothing about real-world economies, but I do know a thing or two about Path of Exiles. This is a Chaos Orb. You will find several of these on your Path of Exile journey. If you read the description, which nobody does anymore, by the way, I play on TikTok, you'll see Even that in the game is a spreadsheet, true. with new random properties. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, and if you a have a like, say this, crappy the dog, you can use a Chaos Orb on it, and it will randomly change the stats that it has to something also crappy. Cool, right? Uh -uh. Well, you'll probably never really want to use it in this way. Instead, a Chaos Orb is used like this. Just like SOJs. After they got duped to hell and yeah. basically became chaos a currency. Orbs are dollars. 200 or so chaos orbs equals a divine, which is big money. Every single freaking item you find that has any value can be traded for some currency, which can then be traded for either chaos orbs or divines. All the other currency items have some sort of useful function too, but the reality is that the most valuable ones are only worth using for the players that really know how to take advantage of the complex crafting system the game has in place. That said, these orbs and basically anything cool you find still has value to you, because if you hit a progression wall at any point post-campaign, the easiest way to solve your problem is to trade for gear upgrades. Trading in Path of Exile is a hot topic. I won't get too much into it, but it's crazy So a big problem with Path of Exile's crafting for me was just the sheer volume of certain currencies that you needed in order to do any meaningful crafting. Like, as somebody who didn't want to sit around spending two hours trading at any given time and I just wanted to play the goddamn game, crafting was basically worthless for me. Because, like, you need, what, 500... What are the... Ch ch chromatic orbs or whatever? Just to have a shot at... Like, oh, God, 600 or 2,000 or something as you keep unlocking more crafting capabilities from your... From the dudes, or however they do it now. They might not even do it that way anymore. But back when the... 
crafting NPCs were a thing before they all betrayed you, apparently. So, you don't like spamming 2,000 alteration orbs on a fractured base for a perfect two mod cup? No. That trade is still in its current state. I mean, I'd be fine with it if I could realistically get those 2,000 on my own in some reasonable pace of time, but I can't GG without trading. Make money, so it's fine, whatever. Then you have to put whatever you want to sell into that tab, give it a price, and hope that someone wants to buy it. If someone does want to buy it, they'll send you a message in games you'll ignore because you're in the middle of a boss fight or something. If you happen to not be busy, you can invite them to your party, they come to your hideout, and then you trade with them. If you want to buy something, you have to look it up on the official Path of Exile trade website and send messages to dozens trade of Trading in Path of Exile is a fucking mess. Response. Yeah, you have to be online to trade anything. Isn't that wild? It's freaking 2023. Auction houses have existed in games for decades yeah. now, but no, we can't have that in our old school ARPG. Let this sink in. Trading is meant to not be enjoyable. They do not want you to like trading. They want you to be miserable while trading. Let yeah, me trading tell you, blows they in have Exile. succeeded. I'd rather trade in Diablo 2 where you just go into a lobby, everything's kind of dick out on the table. That's a much better experience than Path of Exile's shit show of trading, which is absolutely miserable to manage. Like, I'd rather do D2JSP than Path of Exile's trading stuff. Trading in Path of Exile, that's why I play solo set bound, because I have no interest in trading with anyone anyway, and I won't do it. Such a miserable... Especially when people try and manipulate the trading system, like... Uh, they'll have multiple accounts, and they'll all be selling the top end of things, so you just go down, and they're all AFK until you get to the one that's for... Because they're price-fixing and shit, and that was a huge issue back when I played. And, like, you, you'd whisper 40 people, and you'd get one answer. And it was just fucking awful. This is not something to aspire to, the trading system at Path of Exile. It's something that should die a horrible death. And that's why outside tools and organizations still is an issue and they won't do anything no, about not it. that TFT, which I won't say anything about because I don't really have anything yeah. good to say about it. And boy, would it suck if I happen to get banned from it for saying something along the lines of, wow, some of the people behind TFT sure have fragile egos, huh? Oh shit. Uh -huh. Regardless, eventually if you get addicted to this game... I play TFT regular, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Per hour you're making, so, you can get so it's probably, crazy uh, bills, like, you know, gamer shit that I don't care about. Actually, I didn't play much of this season, but that's because I didn't like the mechanics of this season. Next season looks cool, though. They're super expensive. It's also usually somewhere around this point at about 100 hours of playtime into a league that an insidious and depressing thought slowly creeps into my head. Am I actually having fun? The answer for me is usually, nah, not really. No. I'm just hopelessly addicted to the dopamine hit I get whenever something big drops, and that's what keeps me going. Now, the sensible thing to do here would be to stop playing altogether and spend my time doing something I actually enjoy, but uh, what can I say? Love makes you do crazy things sometimes. Look, I know this hasn't been the most convincing video in terms of making you want to play Path of Exile. In fact, you might even think I don't want you to play at all, but you know what? The reality is this. I don't really care. You do you, man. I'm just going over how I perceive this amazing but definitely flawed game, and you can totally decide for yourself. I could talk about Path of Exile for hours, but I think I went over enough for one video. If you want more though, and want to help a guy out, click this button right here. Yeah, just like that. If somehow after watching all of this, you're still interested in playing Path of Exile, welcome to the club. I've got tears of despair this is a buff and oops i did it again what'll it be also do yourself a favor see i do get some of those games guide. uh it's, it's not a bad video like it, it's a fair take on path of exile the good the bad the ugly um honestly i would say if you're gonna play path of exile it's probably best to play it more casually Dude, f forget crafting exists just Play it for the month after the season comes out when it's the most fun and you're just doing shit. Do some mapping, maybe get up to the Shaper once or twice, like, and then you're good. Path of Exile is not a game you want to dive headlong into for too long. But it can be fun for, you know, a month after a new season comes out. And then, and then when you start getting tired of it, just fucking uninstall it. That, it's that easy. That's what I did. And and then I realized I just don't want to deal with Path of Exile anymore. And I stopped, but... If you approach it casually, it's a much more enjoyable game than trying to be hardcore about it. So. Now, if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to get real hardcore <coughs> about Diablo 4. No, I'll probably play it pretty casually, too. But... That's just general life advice. Oh, Robin is delightful.
Oh, see, did it again. It sure did. Sure did. Pro <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right. TFT, the Forbidden Trove Discord, a giant hub for people to trade and interact, just as he said, the people leading it have some fragile egos. Fair enough. Well, that's usually the case. Like, D2JSP's also had drama around it about fragile egos and shit, too, so... That's, that's just, you know, people who aren't prepared to be professional in what is quickly becoming a professional setting. That's, that's pretty standard. You also have the same problem with all these, like, private servers for games and stuff like that. It's just, that, that's how it is. People who haven't been trained to keep their ego in check, or at least outwardly in check. <coughs> Bobby Kodak. Yeah, when you're a big corporal, you're supposed to internalize your ego so it dwells and builds like a cancer that spreads out and infects your entire company until everything collapses in disaster. Just ask Bobby Kotick. 